Good afternoon and good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome our friends from all across the country and all over the world. Um, we've got friends joining us from the UK, Italy, Mexico, Colombia, Kenya, the Philippines, and even Australia. How awesome is that? Welcome, everybody. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Lottie McKinnon, and I'm Teleflora's Program Director of Industry Relations and Education. And we are so proud to offer this program. And I want to thank you for taking the time to take this journey with us. Before we get started though, I do want to say a few really, really important thank yous. Uh, first of all, Teleflora for your commitment to ed education and support to be able to bring these really important programs and classes. Um, it's so essential in moving our industry forward. I'd also like to thank Sean Beckett and his team of the Northeast Region of Unit Presidents for their support of this series. Thank you guys. And also, of course, Longwood Gardens. Thank you so much for grac uh, graciously allowing us to film and enjoy your gorgeous location. You'll all get to see it very shortly. Also, to our education partners, we love you and we are so thankful for you. Um, Accent Decor, Smithers Oasis, Syndicate Sales and Greenpoint Nursery. And of course, Tim Farrell, thank you so much for your hard work and inspiration. You guys, you're gonna love this, it's amazing. Um, before we watch the program, I would like to give you a few instructions to everybody who's joining us. Um, firstly, if you could leave the chat open for comments and instructions, um, we are gonna be playing a video. And so I'm gonna be, um, you know, anybody who has questions who's not able to view it uh, properly, please um, leave the chat open for that. Make sure that you have this set um, in your speaker view. Um, and also, if you could put any questions that you have into the Q&A function um, in this uh, forum, the questions that we take throughout this program, we're going to be answering with our panel in part two of this program on Thursday. So it's super important. We'd love to hear from you. We love your questions. This is a community and it's so important that we all share. Um, and in case you need to step away, of course, we'll be posting this on our YouTube channel later on. Um, for those of you who don't know, we have a Facebook page, Teleflora Industry Relations and Education. Please go ahead and follow us on there. Also on our Instagram page, that's fairly new, so I would love to get some more followers. We post um, information about our programs and classes and other fun stuff happening within Teleflora and within the industry. So please do join us. Um, now that we've got the practical stuff out of the way, I would love to turn it over to Tim. So for those of you who don't know him, he is a shop owner, a member of our esteemed um, education specialist team. He's based in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. He's got so many accolades to his name, but a few of them, he's past president of the American Institute of Floral Designers. Um, he's designed flowers for papal visits, presidential inaugurations and contests all over the world. And very recently, he became a grandfather for the first time. So congratulations, Tim. Um, so firstly, I do want to ask before we get the video going, um, I would love to hear from you, Tim, if you could talk about um, your inspiration behind this program, because I know um, we've seen this huge increase in plant parenthood um, throughout the country and throughout the world, actually. So um, if you could share a little bit with our viewers um, about your inspiration behind this program, that would be awesome. Oh, absolutely. So Lonnie, first, thanks for even having me here. I, I am so thrilled to be part of this and to be doing this program for Teleflora and honored to be part of this education team. And thanks to the Northeast region for sponsoring this. Yeah, you are my people. I've been part of the Northeast region of Teleflora for years. So I really appreciate you all coming together as a team to sponsor this. So basically the story behind the program is, is when the world changed last year, it's almost a year ago this week. It was a year ago this week. Um, the world changed and, and we as educators for Teleflora needed to find a different way to bring education to our member florists. Um, Lottie and I were brainstorming and we're coming up with different ideas and Longwood Gardens for me is practically in my backyard. It's about 35 minutes from my home. I'm able to drive there straight out Route 1, which is an easy ride, but it is an incredible, incredible place to go to with both inside gardens and outside gardens. I, as a business owner, saw that that not only has were flowers strong in the spring and people wanted to send flowers, but our plant increase over the last year has dramatically changed. And pretty much by about 30% across the board on, on dish gardens and green plants, 
blooming plants, terrariums, and succulent gardens. And all those levels of gardens have really been popular for us. So I talked a lot about going out to Longwood Gardens and not only looking at plants and seeing what we could do with plants, but what kind of inspiration we could get from those plants, those plantings, those greenhouses, those beautiful gardens, the architecture, the walkways, everything that you're gonna see in this incredible video from Longwood Gardens. So that's the story behind the program. And I will have to say it was an idea when it started, but when I got out there and was able to really look at all these materials, I've been there many times, but never with the idea of, of doing an, an educational program for florists with this. But when I got there and was able to look at what was there and then think of the ideas and the, the creativity that it could spark in my mind, and hopefully the ideas I could share with all of you to come up with some great ideas for plants and how people can use them in their homes and their businesses and how people can use flowers again and have flower arrangements based on the beautiful parts of nature that are around us. So Lonnie, that's basically, that's how it came about, wasn't it? That was the story behind this. And then from that, we got these great videos. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Tim. I'm going to launch the video now for everybody. And we... So everybody enjoy, and we'll see you at the end. And then hopefully again, tune in on Thursday for a lot more and more conversation about the videos and, and the things that we can all do as shop owners and as floral lovers, just to have plants and flowers be a great part of our lives again. Welcome to Longwood Gardens. Hi, I'm Tim Farrell and I'm here with Teleflora at Longwood Gardens in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. It is a beautiful facility with both inside and outside gardens that we're here and we're gonna have some virtual learning experiences and get some great inspiration from some of these gardens. So this is the main conservatory. It is a majestic building. Look at these beautiful columns, the glass in the ceiling. It was built in the early 1900s, and this place houses 5,500, sometimes up to 6,000 different varieties of plants and flowers. Just look at what we have right here. We have the beautiful cleomes, the chrysanthemums, these gorgeous spider chrysanthemums, palm trees, grapefruit trees, dracaena plants. Look at the beautiful grapefruit tree over there. It's just fabulous. The minute you walk in, your senses come alive and, and you get the, the senses of, of smell and sight and even texture when we see things that we want to touch. Look at these beautiful flowers. Back in here, we have some Dracaena plants planted in. Again, there's so much here to look at that as a floral designer, this is where we can get some great, great inspiration. Even look at the beautiful bird of paradise, these fabulous flowers. Many different flowers from different tropical zones put together under the same roof. It is a fabulous experience and we're gonna have so much fun creating flowers from the inspiration we get here today. Every time we turn a quarter inside this conservatory, we find something new. The collection of flowers is like nothing else I've ever seen. Even in this one area, look at the, the Guzmania bromeliad and the orange chrysandra just planted together. We have the beautiful ferns underneath the palm trees and then backed by the burgundy of the beautiful Thai leaves. These planters have really thought about the collection of materials and things that they can put together so that it becomes just truly a treat for your eyes wherever you walk in Longwood Gardens. Even areas as small as this are very interesting. Look at the way we have the acidy green of the coral bells next to the silvery green of the licorice plants. The contrast between those two greens is very effective. And this is exactly how we want to think as floral designers to make even the smallest areas of our arrangement very interesting and places for the viewer to draw into our designs. And this area behind me is the exhibition hall. The DuPonts have their music room on the far end, and this area, when normally houses plants with water in the bottom, can be drained so that guests could sit here and there could be some kind of a performance or musical exhibition in the area in front of them. And now we're in East Conservatory. The collection here is again, beautiful. As you notice, water is a very important part of this conservatory. You see it and you hear it and it becomes part of that whole experience. Again, we have an incredible collection of materials here. If we look down here, we have the ficus trees making archways to different path areas. The beautiful Dracaena plants, even these gorgeous anthurium, working our way up to the towering bamboo that reaches the very top of the conservatory. Look at this area. This is just a transitional area that connects one greenhouse to another. 
Everywhere you look, it's very mystical. We have the beautiful cane begonias. Look at them, they're as tall as I am. Up above, we have hanging baskets of croton plants making these beautiful spheres. And this very soft material is pepperberry. It's not in bloom yet, but it's pepperberry making a very soft cascading motion down from the ceiling down to the floor. And this is the tropical terrace. There are more varieties of philodendron in this room than I've ever seen in my life. We have the monstera leaves, the golden pothos, we have nuptitis, we have even another philodendron. Look at this leaf, it's ju just gorgeous. The prayer plants, the fern, this incredible rabbit's foot fern just cascading down from the ceiling. As florists, we want to rethink our plant business and understand that we can combine different plants with colors and forms and shapes and, and even sizes to make beautiful planters that we can give to our customers. It's so important these days because customers really want to have that comfort in their home. So if they're stuck inside their house, to be able to have part of nature in with them makes them feel at ease again. And we can be the ones to put together these creations to make beautiful compositions for our customers. Now that we've been through the gardens, we're gonna find ways to bring inspiration to our plant part of our business in our flower shops. And all of the plants that we have here right now, especially this first collection, are plants that are very easily available from our local wholesalers or local greenhouse suppliers as well. The first one I wanna share with you is this, and we're gonna call this the Regency Cyclamen. And this is in the Teleflora Blooming Tulip Vase, which is a very great container for fresh flower arrangements, but also great for some plants as well. And, and simply, we just put one four and a half inch cyclamen plant into this container and then added some butterflies to it. The cyclamen is just beautiful because you see the great markings on the leaves with the silvery gray markings against the emerald green. And then these beautiful hot pink blooms seem to just dance above the foliage. And then we added the butterflies just to continue that motion up a little bit further. So this is a very easy to construct piece that you can have in your shop, very long lasting. Keep it in a cooler place because the blooms will do better in a cooler place. And it's something easy to just walk out the door, send out on a delivery every day. The second design we have for you, just a small plant design, is this mini uh, grouping of African violets. And, and for this, we've actually used the miniature ones, the two and a half inch pots, which are mini violets, tiny little plants with beautiful blooms, and, and don't underestimate the power of miniature. That's something sometimes people think that their customers want something big and something more uh, elaborate in size, but sometimes there is a very small space and something more diminutive like this is perfect. So we grouped together four violet plants in this little bowl with a little bit of moss tucked around there, just being sure to vary up the varieties a little bit so we have a little bit of contrast in the shading of both the blooms and the leaves on the African violets. And the third one in this grouping is this rabbit's foot fern, and this is actually one of my favorites. I love it because of the beautiful foliage, but look at the actual fuzzy root part of the system that's here that does resemble a rabbit's foot. So we just dropped that plant, and this was a six inch plant, we just put it into this beautiful white container that, that we were able to find at a local wholesaler, and, and a little bit of moss in there, and it's complete, but the best part is look at the inside. We've just had added a little bit of Spanish moss and this little artificial yellow uh, chickadee, I guess, into the center and made that a little kind of enclosed space. So when the uh, customer comes up to it, they're exploring it, they see it, how, how beautiful it is. But then as they look down inside, they notice the bird in the nest and it becomes just something more emotional and something more appealing to the customer. Now, our next collection that we assemble for you is a whole different series of plants. And we're gonna start with first the pineapple plant. This one we're gonna call the mahalo, and that means thank you in Hawaiian. So it's a great gift to send as a thank you to somebody. But if you look at it, the pineapple is actually a part of the bromeliad family. And we're so familiar with bromeliads, and we saw some of them in the gardens at Longwood, the guzmania. But this is a cousin, and it actually does have the actual pineapple fruit blooming from the top of the plant. The next one we're going to talk about is this, and this is Fern Gully. And, and I love this because of all the different colors of green and textures of green within the same planter. And again, this is something that we found as inspiration from the garden when we saw things along the pathway there. So we have the maidenhair fern, and this is a uh, native of Southeast Asia. We have the beautiful silver lace fern, which is native of New Zealand. And then tucked down in the front, the low and lush lettuce fern, which is actually from Hawaii. 
So we have different firm plants from different parts of the world, but as long as you're giving this a lot of moisture and misting it maybe on a daily or every other day basis, this is gonna do really well. With this, we also added a little bit more to it and we added some uh, reindeer moss down and low uh, just to give it an additional texture and look like maybe some stones and rocks down in there. But we also added dragonflies, uh, those artificial things. And you know, I know that, that for years as florists, we've talked about bees and bows and butterflies sell, and they do, but sometimes it's just that novelty that's enough to take the customer over the edge and make the purchase. So don't forget about adding novelty things like that into your arrangements. And the last one we have in this trio is uh, what I call the piece of paradise. And the piece of paradise for me is great for people who maybe can't get away and, and need to find a way to bring maybe their favorite spot to their home or to their desktop. And that's accomplished perfectly and very easily with a palm like this. This is an areca palm and very easy to care for. It does need a little bit more light than some plants, but as long as you have good light coming into your space, this will do well. And this is set inside of this great looking container, which is Teleflora's Mid Mod Planter. It has a very modern geometric uh, design on the ceramic, but it sits in this nice wood stand, which, which gives it a more contemporary look. So think about offerings like this to give to your customers that show different forms and different shapes and different plants from other parts of the world. And you're educating them about the things behind this will also make these sales more appealing to your customers. And next, we're, we're going to show another pairing of plants. The first one is very novel. It's the, the Hypoestis and the mini Chefalera planted together in this wire frame that actually resembles a mini greenhouse. So it has more of a novelty feel to it, but three little plants just planted together, a little bit of moss in there. And again, in the cement container, just give it water maybe once a week, and this will do really well for your customers. And this second planter is really what I call an homage to the 70s and maybe early 80s. And for those of you that were around then, it combines what I would say were the big three of that era. It was the Tradescentia, the Purple Passion, and the Spider Plant. And everybody seemed to have those three things in their home. So, so we found these in both uh, smaller pots, like four inch pots, and planted one of each together in one planter together to give you that more nostalgic and, and uh, throwback look to the 70s. This is something that could be sold just by itself, or we could add something to that. So what I've chosen to add is a Teleflora's Hearts of Heaven sculpted piece. And this is a fabulous piece and a fresh arrangement, but we also like to use them to add into planters because sometimes for a sympathy type of an occasion, something going to the home or even to the funeral home, this is a very nice thing for a family to have as a keepsake. And um, it has a very nice saying on here as well, and it's a beautifully sculpted piece of ceramic. So we're just gonna use the actual um, spike that comes with that to put in the fresh flower arrangement and work that down into the planter and have that be part of this design. So together, this makes a beautiful presentation and a gift that any family would appreciate. This planter I've named the Intercontinental, and this has three different plants from many different places of the world. We're gonna start with the, uh, the Calathea, and this is the Rattlesnake Calathea, and this one comes to us from Southeast Asia right now. We also have the beautiful, beautiful Alocasia poly. Um, this is native of New Zealand and parts of Australia. And then down low with this bright lime green, we have this crispy wave, which actually is native of Japan. So all of these come from different parts of the world. They may actually be grown and propagated here now, but the origin is from many different continents, thus the name, Intercontinental. And, and now this particular planner I've termed reawakening. And the reason why I use that terminology is because it has both this beautiful dried or dead branch um, that's laid horizontally in the container, and then in the center and through that branch and through the network of branch, we've actually placed a combination of different plants. So we have the Arbicola, we have the gorgeous orange calancha with that bright advancing color orange. And then tucked down low, we have this, this beautiful begonia with the, the angel wing shaped leaf and the beautiful markings on there. There's a couple of small um, other type of plants just tucked in there to fill in. We put some reindeer moss in there. Oh, and I see in the front, we have the pink splash, which is the hypoestis again. So there's a nice combination of both colors and textures within the planter, but I like the contrast of these beautiful growing things against the dried dead branch that's here. And I think together that makes a really effective piece. 
This planter is known as Fantasy Island because all of these beautiful tropical plants are planted together in, in one beautiful ceramic bowl. So we're going to start with the Calathea here, and, and this Calathea is just gorgeous. Look at the markings on the leaves, and those big oval leaves are, are really, really striking. And next to that, we have the Aglionema, and this is called Red Valentine, and pretty rightly so because of the beautiful markings on this leaf. And then in the back, we have an anthurium, and that's an iconic plant of Hawaii with those heart-shaped blooms, as you can see. This one's uh, actually called Livium, and this variety is actually a striped red and white flower. So it's something not seen as often as others. So, so looking for varieties that are a little bit more rare or a little bit less common is something that will allow your shop to become the one that's like the expert in your town and the place to go for plants. So when you're shopping, look for things that are a little bit more unusual, plant them together, and, and make very nice combinations. In this, the one thing that I noticed when it was done is it, it seems really dark. Um, the, the, the soil on the bottom is a little bit dark, so I thought we just needed to add something to this. So we're going to just take some great, uh, green reindeer moss and, and pop that into the base to bring a more advancing color there and make it look even brighter than it is just as is. So this is fabulous moss, and you can see that bright chartreuse color. If we take and we just kind of drop it into there, we don't need to secure it really in there, but just lay it on top. It is something that will absorb a little bit of water and actually help keep some moisture under the plants so that the humidity level will be a little bit higher than normal. But more than that, I just love the bright green color of it and the way that it brings your eye down to the base of the plant and really is much more attractive than just having soil or something darker in there. And um, that's our Fantasy Island Planter. And now I found my way into the Longwood Gardens Rose House. There's so many different varieties that are in bloom right now. We were just thrilled when we found this place. These are actually hybrid tea roses, which are a combination. They were two plants, the tea rose and the hybrid perennial, which were crossed to make varieties for us that they could propagate very quickly and have longer lasting, beautiful blooms with high petal counts. Interesting enough, the first hybrid tea rose was only developed in 1867. It was Jean-Baptiste André Goulet that bred two varieties together to bring us what we have today as the entire family of hybrid tea roses. What most people don't realize is that rose production is not done through normal propagation where you would plant seeds and grow new rose bushes. It's done through a process called grafting, where they take a small cut of the rose that we want to produce and they cut it and graft it, which means they attach it to the rootstock of a totally different plant. It's a rose plant that has maybe a stronger root system and a better way to actually absorb the water and nutrients through the soil. When they're grafted together, the rose plant blooms just like the piece of cutting that you took off the original plant that you wanted to propagate. And along our journey, we found the Idea Garden here at Longwood Gardens. What a great collection of materials in this area. Look at this. Look at the euphorbia we have back here with these beautiful balloon-like seed pods. They would add a great element to a design. These dahlias in these mustard yellow color are just gorgeous. Oh, got a little grasshopper there as well too. We have the rutabecchia and this very textural celosia in this almost mauve shading that we have. I haven't seen this one before either. Over on this side, we have the sedum and these succulent like plants with these clusters of flowers in this darker, almost raspberry color would be a great addition to base down deep in an arrangement to bring some additional textural value. Even in a corner of a garden like this, we can find inspiration. Look at the dark purple value of the heliotrope and how it interplays with the shadows inside this large agave plant. It almost has a, a violet color hue within there. As we see materials worked into the garden, we see more heliotrope, and then your eye is taken by these ornamental grasses with the variegated foliage that takes your eye up and through this garden even further. Lessons like this are what we can learn from landscape in order to bring rhythm into our floral design. It's all about the lime materials and the places where we put them in a very purposeful and meaningful placement so that we can control the way that the human eye rides through our designs. This is the entrance to the flower walk. It's a beautiful pathway with an abundance of floral material on either side. We have shrubs and trees and perennials and annuals all combined together to make a beautiful display. As you'll notice as we go down the walk, it's actually color blocked. So we go from one color palette to another 
as we proceed through the walk. Come on, follow me. In this first part of the garden that we find, look at the combination of blues and purples and violets and lavenders. There's different tints, tones, and shades from the same part of the color wheel to establish a very harmonious color palette for us. Even notice all the different foliages that are available here in the garden. I love to get inspiration from this because I think foliage now has become very popular in floral design. If we see the different textures and shapes and even colors of the leaves that are here, these are things we want to bring into our design. The beautiful burgundy round leaves, the eucalyptus with that silvery gray foliage, the acacia with that very feathery feel to it, and even something like the plumes of this ornamental grass. All of these things are great materials that we can bring into our design to bring in accent to our floral arrangements. And as you can see, our colors are transitioning to a softer color palette now. We have the pinks and the whites being added to the blues and purples that were already established to give us a different feel. The celosia, again, very popular in so many different varieties, is a great flower that we can also use in all of our floral arrangements. And as I explore further down the path, I find things like the white gumfrina paired next to the beautiful dark value of the celosia. Those two things next to each other achieve a principle of design called contrast. That's when we put things that are different next to each other to bring to light the differences between the two. And in the central part of the flower walk, we have this beautiful fountain in the center surrounded by mixed materials. What I wanted to point out here is the fact that color can actually evoke emotion and maybe even season. If you notice in some of the other areas we were to, the darker values maybe gave us more of a feel of autumn or autumnal times, but this yellow against the blue water definitely feels more like summer. And these are the things we need to think about when we're creating designs to send out to our customers. Sometimes we want to use a more dramatic effect with color. And in using a color palette like this, where we have very intense values of color, like the cobalt blue and the raspberry pink and the fire engine red, and even some orange together in a design, achieves a different emotional impact. And in the second to the last part of this garden, we find yellow. Yellow for us is a very advancing color. That means we can see that from very far away. So when we talk about putting our flower installations in places that they need to be seen from a distance, we need to think about putting the more advancing colors like yellow and orange in there so that they can be seen from farther away. Over on this side, we have another collection of chrysanthemums and beautiful dahlias. These are great focal flowers for us because they have, again, a very bright color, but also a nice mass to the flower itself so that it establishes some visual weight in our designs. Sometimes we choose to use just white flowers in our design. When we use only one color, we call that monochromatic, but specifically when we talk about just using white in design, it's called achromatic. So picture a design using white lilies and white sage and white dahlias and white roses with some foliage, and we have a beautiful composition that's a little bit more limited on the color palette, but makes a striking composition. And now we found our way into the Silver Garden. The skyscraper type cactus that are here are phenomenal. The acacia and the silver foliage mixed with the light yellow flowers is beautiful, but look at the plant tucked back in here. We have a century plant that is just huge, and for those people that are succulent lovers, this is really their mecca. As we walk down, we see even the flooring has been thought about, so they have the beautiful slate to continue with the silver color palette that we had. We have Sansevieria plants and bromeliads tucked away in little areas here. The beautiful dichondra making like a carpet of silvery gray on the floor. Even calancho. Many of us have never seen the calancho before, but this whole area is a beautiful treat for our eyes. We move on and we have the artemisia plant right here with that very feathery foliage. And again, one of our favorites right now, the dusty miller with a true gray collar that we can add to our floral arrangements to make things very trendy for these days. The day is going so quickly here at Longwood Gardens, but those last walks that we took gave me even new inspiration. And in particular, the Silver Garden is what I wanted to concentrate on to show some both florals and plants of 
the inspiration that we got from those areas. So the first one that we're going to do is just this combination of plants in the modern heritage container from Teleflora. And as many of you know, for years, Teleflora has had the noble heritage, which is in the leather brown color. But this modern heritage is the same shape, same mold, but done in a more urban chic, um, almost a steel type of a finish and, and coloration to it. To bring that into the plants, we, we chose plants that all have some type of a silvery gray uh, tone to them so that they unify very nicely with the container. We have the beautiful English lavender that, that again has interesting foliage, but the blooms are just very fragrant and, and bring a beautiful fragrance into anybody's home. Down towards the front, we have again another mini cyclamen. This one with red blooms, but again, look at these little rings of this, this silver gray on the outside and how beautifully it ties into the coloration that we have here. We have a type of pilea in the front, and, and this one is just tiny, tiny leaves, and this is pilea guaca, and this will just cascade over and just continue to grow nicely in almost any environment. And in the back, we have the actual same calancho, which is a calancho silver spoons, which we saw in the silver garden walk, you know, as we were just out in the garden. Together, you see different forms and different textures and, and even different colorations within that green-gray color family. So there's a lot of visual exploration that can go on here and ways for that a consumer can just dive down in and really see the beauty of the different materials that we put together here. So now that we've created this beautiful planter, we want to find a way to, to show it in its best light to our customers. So in your store, maybe you'll find a way to add a little drama to that or put it in the right environment that'll draw attention to it and bring customers to the actual plant that you want to sell. It can easily be achieved by adding one simple element. This beautiful manzanita branch. And we've just taken the branch, which was naturally brown, and we've sprayed it with two layers of Design Master. The first one is super silver to give it a real nice base coat in that gray silver tone. And then we've hit it on top of that with Uber Frost. And that's something we do just to tone down the silver and make it even a little bit more textural. So when you see it up close, it actually looks like it's a frosted branch. By taking something like this and just tucking it in behind and around the planter that we have, Look at how dramatic this becomes, and, and that will draw the customer to this, and you may even have the extra sale by selling them the manzanita branch as well, too. So this is a design that I've termed Serenity Spires. And, and again, we're staying with that very muted color palette that's so important in today's world. Many of our customers are decorating their homes in all beiges or grays or even grays as they call it now. So we tried to keep the, the color harmony very subdued and very limited to go along with those interiors. We've started by using this nice ceramic container and the materials that we've used in here, again, the spires is this grouping of white birch. It just kind of comes up and gives us a very vertical movement for the design. We followed in by putting in some of these rows and this variety is actually called Earl Grey. And it is a very, very muted tone. It has a tiny hint of lavender to it, a tiny hint of green in it that you have to look very closely to see. But again, it's very, very neutral in tonation. And then we've accented the planter with the Dusty Miller and the beautiful Brunia, which is here to give us, again, another texture, almost a berry type texture, but they look like little tiny um, pebbles of cement that are in the base of the container. And, and because of that tone and because of the resemblance to cement, they look heavy. So by putting them low in the design, we establish better visual weight in here. In this design, I also want to talk about the line that it creates. And we've created a, a natural vertical line and an actual line with the birch materials. But within the design also, we've created what we call implied line. An implied line is when we take one type of material and place that so your eye follows from one to the next, to the next, to the next. So your eye visually connects those like materials and makes another line movement. So it again, reinforces and really makes that, that vertical line very strong in this design. And that is our Serenity Spires. And now we have a design that, that I've termed first frost, and it really has that frosty feeling or emotion to it, doesn't it? And that's really given by these oak leaves. It's a product that is available now where a lot of markets, both the South American market and some of the flowers out of Mexico, they're using paint very heavily on top of fresh and even some dry materials. And that's to give us more options in the materials that we use. So in tying in with the, the muted tone of the container, we put some of those oak leaves in there first to establish the form, which is this more looser oblong or oval form that we have. And then we've completed the design by putting one large hydrangea in there, these white anthurium, which are just so gorgeous. And these are actually um, sent to us from our friends at Greenpoint Nursery in Hawaii. They're a beautiful, beautiful, pristine white. And again, they add another texture, which is that smooth, almost leathery texture to the design. 
if you look, even though they're whites, this white appears very different than this white because the textures are so different. And that's what we're trying to achieve, more contrast in our design. We've just added in a couple of other flowers, the white lisianthus, which is just beautiful to give us a little bit more of a, a diagonal line that, that we have established through here. So your eye follows from the lisianthus through the hydrangea down through the anthurium. And then we've accented with some of these micro pom-poms. And this is one of my favorite varieties that's on the market right now. It's called yin yang. And it's because it's black and white together. It's kind of like the, the, the white and the black opposites each other in the same flower. So it's a very novel flower. It gives us the appearance of tiny anemones, which are very popular in the market right now, but at a fraction of a cost of that. A little bit of eucalyptus added in here, and again, our Dusty Miller to give us that very silvery gray tone, but a real beautiful combination of flowers to make a low piece that could go on anybody's table. And then I found this beautiful footed pot. It has three tiny feet on it, but it has a very, you know, cauldron type of a shape to it and just simply put in there a combination of dusty miller and and these roses this is one called quicksand which ties in nicely to this matte finished part of the bottom of the container so it has that more brown beigey tone instead of the gray tone we've accented it with some of the plumosa which is again one of the painted materials that we have coming to us out of the south american market right now so it's it's a regular you know green plumosa that's painted with this blushy color pink to just give us a nice accent and we've used it to to both base the design but also make this one arcing piece come up and out of the design the technique in this is called sheltering and that's when we use one material to closely kind of veil over or to almost like an umbrella shelter what's underneath and what that does is it subconsciously draws the viewer into the materials that are underneath, which are these beautiful roses, and makes them more important. So it was a very easy to construct um, floral design, something that would last very long because most of the florals are cut very low and put close to the foam in the container. But it's something that we've called blushing beauty. And I think it's pretty evident why. And for this next composition, I've chosen the Teleflora Parisian Garden container. This is out of the Teleflor Sympathy line, but does not need to be used exclusively for sympathy arrangements. As you can see, it has a beautiful texture to it. It looks just like stone and this carved um, finish to it. It's just beautiful. And in that, we put some floral foam. And in particular, in this one, I used the Smithers Oasis Springtime Max Life Foam. The reason why I use that is this springtime foam is actually a lighter consistency than other foams. So it actually will help flowers like mini callas and things like Gerbers last longer because there's less of a proportion of foam to water. So there's lots of water in there. So they drink very easily in there. The Smithers Oasis company actually developed this foam for us. And it's been through multi-generations of development where they have this chemical reaction where, where they make this foam, but they've worked so closely with both botanists and engineers and biologists so that they can have this foam recreated now. So it so closely mimics the stems of the insides of flowers that flowers drink at about 99% efficiency out of this foam as they would out of clear water. So let's talk about the design. So the construction on this, it is an armature design, and this is created by putting in curly willow in different spokes of the wheel, as we'll say, or in different radials out from the center of the foam. And then taking some of the bind wire and just attaching it to each other till we get the spiraling cyclonic motion or cyclone motion. And that's why we call this the cyclonic as far as the title for the arrangement. Then we take other materials like the beautiful plumes of grass, the mini callas, and try to follow that same spiraling motion so that your eye, when it finds a stem, always rides down that stem and into the center of the design, which is the most important part of the design. In that center, we base together some different materials. We have the quicksand roses. We have this gorgeous Gerber, which is um, like a creamy color on the outside, and it fades into a peachy pink and then almost a black on the very center. So it naturally draws your eye into the center of the flower and lets your eye rest at that darkest spot. We then add a beautiful astilbe to give it a different lighter texture and something springy out of the center and based in some reindeer moss, some white hypericum berries and scabiosa pods. So, so in this arrangement, we have many different textures and many different things from different life cycles of flowers. So it really gives a beautiful, very natural and organic look to it. Um, the other material I forgot to mention is the, the olive and the olive branches in here. So this is something that traditionally has been a symbol of peace, but I've actually used it in this arrangement because of the underside of the leaf. And if you can see the underside, as opposed to that sage green, the underside really is that silvery gray that we've been working with in this entire segment that was inspired by the Silver Garden. 
So this is our Cyclonic design, and again, very interesting to have on a table because when people come up to it, they, they approach it from one angle, but as they get to look down into it, they see something totally different, and it becomes a whole new experience for people appreciating floral design. Okay, so now let's create something together from the inspiration that we've gotten so far. So I'm gonna start with this beautiful container from Accent Decor, and it again is that, that um, grayish tone, but also layered with different shadings of gray and even a very light dusting of gold to give you a more tone on tone type of finish here. And in this container, we've, we've put some water in here, we filled this, so we're gonna add an armature that we've created out of the rustic wire. And, and rustic wire, if you haven't used this, this is a product from the Smithers Oasis company as well. And it is a great wire material that is covered with a little bit of a, a textural type of a paper paper and, and um, twine actually, and the coloring, uh, it comes in this green, also in a natural, which is like a raffia color, and brown. But the coloring gives you something very much organic looking and, and blends into your floral design very nicely. So we've made almost like a homemade chicken wire and, and enclosed it to make a sphere shape, and we're going to put that into the container and just kind of nestle it right in there so it kind of sits nicely. To secure it, we're going to take some other pieces of the rustic wire, and we're going to just twist it around the base and then bring it up and actually tie it to the armature that we've created already. So it becomes almost like, you know, um, this vine type of a armature that is, is enveloping the container itself, but also becomes a very secure mechanic so that this armature now is not going to want to rock out of this bowl. So we just again twist it, it's very pliable, and we're going to bring it up and grab one of these extra, we'll call them tendrils that we have, and twist it there and bring this one up on the other side. So basically, all four corners of this arrangement now have this structure tied in very nicely. And these, what we'll call tendrils, we'll just kind of bring them out to the side and have them gravitate down. And, and when this is inside the arrangement, these will just look like vines that have kind of creeped through and around the arrangement as well too. So now that we have that, and that's really secure, we're gonna get some materials and we'll start with the olive branch. And um, we're going to take some pieces and just cut this and have this cascade out of the arrangement and give us some great line movements to start with. And, and you'll see the secret to working with an armature like this is to try to make sure that, that any of these stems go through two placements in the armature. So there's a top placement and a bottom placement, and that kind of keeps it in line and allows it to lock in place and won't shift later to another place for you. But I love this olive. Again, look, the, the olive branch already starts to just combine itself and, and be a part of that armature that you've created. And already you'll see there's, there's less and less distinction between the artificial armature that's in here and this natural material of the olive branch that we're adding in. The tonation of this is just fabulous, and the, the values of green that we have in here already, again, nothing too bright, nothing like a Bells of Ireland, which is a, a very bright citrusy green, and nothing like an emerald green of like a, a baker or a leather leaf fern. Everything is very toned down and very, very organic looking in this design so far. And we may need to add more olive later, but, but that's basically the start of what we're going to put in there. And next, let's see, I think we'll use some of this Dusty Miller. And, and this is just fabulous. The beautiful, this is the broadleaf variety as opposed to the lacy leaf. And the broadleaf, again, is just gorgeous and textural and looks like, looks like silver velvet when you come up to it closely. So by putting this in here, we're, we're adding a lot of color but also texture to the design. And, and as people start to explore, that, explore this, they're not gonna be able to help but to want to get their fingers in and just touch it and feel the velvety part of the Dusty Miller leaf. So you can see, even at this part, we already have a basic form created. We have the, the furthest points of the design established, both front, back, and left, right, and the height of the design, or basically the height of where we're going to be, is already established within the design. Now let's add some flowers. 
Okay, we have some fantastic white dendrobiums that, that come to us again from Greenpoint Nursery in Hawaii. And we're gonna take these and, and just give the entire bunch a clip at first. Um, always remembering it's important to clip the stems of the flowers because they will start to seal themselves off when they're out of water. So by clipping them, we give them a fresh cut and allow them to, to really drink better and absorb the, the water better to all the flowers that are on that stem. So we're working these in between what we have here already. And I think with this um, flower, with the dendrobium, we're just gonna go pretty much left to right and put them into the design there and not have them as much front to back and just make the line movements most, mostly just this way throughout the arrangement. So we have a beautiful arcing crescent shape that you can see established here already. Next, we're gonna take some of the, the roses and we have this, again, the quicksand rose that we've used before and we're gonna tuck these in and, and as we bring these into the design, the more open flowers start to establish a little bit more visual weight for us. And by bringing those beautiful open blooms into the center of the design, we get some nice weight going on and, and the design appears very stable because the heavier looking things are in towards the center of the design. And I like to work very quickly. Um, time is money in the flower business, so I will cut a couple stems all at one time if I need to, and I will then insert them into the design. The more that we design and the more years we're in this business, we start to understand we don't have to measure each flower as we go along. We kind of have an eye for, for where flowers need to be cut. And that way I can cut them kind of on the side and then just bring them in and put them into the design. And we're also going to add in these. They look like roses, but they're actually not. They're, they're cabbages and that ornamental kale. And if we take that, we're going to peel off the lower petals. So there's, there's not going to be many petals down in the design that are going to cause the water to maybe rot and to become filled with bacteria. So if we peel off all the lower things that are below the, the level, that will help make the flowers last a little bit longer. And we're gonna tuck these both together in this design. Maybe this one I'm gonna put right down low here. And I'm hoping this looks good. Well, that will have to be here. I'm hoping it looks good from the front because I'll have to come around front and look at it in a little bit, right? <laughs> and then we're gonna take some of the Earl Grey roses that we've used already today. And with these, it just adds a different value of color. And again, those muted down colors that we've been working with so far, we're, we're not using anything in this design that has a very strong color. Everything is very muted and very toned down. And, and the colors just really just, almost like a watercolor painting, just kind of wash into each other and become very beautiful to complement each other in the design. And again, I'm working in the back as well to make sure this side is covered beautifully also. I do want to take off most of the leaves on these hybrid tea roses because again, they're more of a different value of green that, that we don't want to take the eye to a different place. So by keeping everything more washy in color and taking out those stronger values of green, it becomes more cohesive as an arrangement. So we have the basic part of the design constructed already with the roses, the kale, and the dendrobiums and the foliage. Now we're gonna add some more interesting materials to, to make this something, again, a real visual treat for people to come up and explore. Campanula, again, an English garden flower, but why not use that in with other flowers? Um, it, it blends in beautifully, and it's one of my favorite because I like these little bell-type flowers that, that each of these stems creates. So we're going to take some of the campanula and, and work them in almost in the same fashion that we did the dendrobiums. And they're going to go pretty much side to side in this arrangement. When, when I was first learning floral design, we always had to have the high point in the middle and everything kind of went down from there. But in today's designs, we're seeing lots of things with lower points in the middle, higher ends, or even that, that dip shape or concave shape in the center. So there really are no rules. You just need to, to know your craft and understand the basic elements and principles of design. And once you understand those, you'll know how to kind of bend those guidelines and make beautiful compositions that are totally your own. And this campanula is just, just fabulous. So we're gonna to try to lighten up the design now by adding a little bit of Queen Anne's Lace. And you can see it just has more of a play and air will actually move this. Any kind of air current in the, move, in the room will move it. So we're gonna add in the Queen Anne's Lace just among the other florals to give it just a lighter element and something that gives a little bit more motion to the design. 
many times, especially here in Pennsylvania, we actually see Queen Anne's lace right on the side of the road. It, it is a beautiful wildflower that does grow here. And it is something though that we don't want to just take for granted because look at what a beautiful addition this is to the design and how just having a few blooms in this design, just elevated and up away from the center, just gives it a little bit more life and allows the whole design to spring a little bit more outward from the low base that we've started. And we'll bring one coming to the front as well here and then maybe one all the way over to this side here just to kind of tie it all in beautifully. Okay, and there's our Queen Anne's Lace edition. Next, some more tropical flowers. Now we're going to add some tropical flowers. And again, from Greenpoint, look at these anthorium. They're not the white ones, but they're a real blush color, just a little bit of coloration. It's like a peachy pink in here. And we're going to bring these in and add them to the design. And we're going to maybe just put three of them in together. And we're going to create a line, like we talked about before, that implied line. We're going to just have three of these work our way into the design to bring your eye from the outermost point in towards the center of the design. And there's our actual line with the anthurium, just giving you a path to follow either in or out of the design. So to add even more textural interest, we're gonna add the scabiosa pods and the silver brunia. Beautiful materials, a little bit more unexpected and things that, that people, as they find these in your, in your design, will find it even more interesting. So just a few of these, the scabiosa pods, we're gonna cut and, and pop through the design. Maybe three over here and three in another place. And you'll actually find that inserting things now becomes actually much easier because the network of stems that we've already created with the florals that are in the armature actually make it tighter in there so that as we put things in, they really just stay in place. As a general rule of thumb, when you're doing something like this, it's always best to start with the thicker flower first and then go to the thinner stem flowers after that and you'll find that that network that you have in the design works very nicely and you can what we call lace flowers through those other flowers very beautifully and now if we work on the other side of the design to balance out what we have there what you'll find that as you put more and more stems in like this they they really start to, to stay very nicely because there's a whole network inside that arrangement with the armature and the thicker stem flowers that are in there already and we're going to make sure we address the front of the design as well, too, and have maybe just two of these scabiosa pods worked one, and then two into the design. So now to add the silver brunia. And again, it comes in beautiful clusters, and if we just take this, cut it, and, and work them in deep into the design, you'll see your eye is drawn into another area of interest. And now for the finishing touch on this arrangement. Every arrangement needs to have what I call a focal point or focal area, and that's the area of greatest interest in the design. You can do that in many different ways. You can have your brightest, most advancing color there. You can have the largest massive materials there, or you can have all line movements of the florals go to one spot so it creates a great focal area. In this design, we're actually gonna use one flower, and that's this baby right here, the King Protea. This is a white King Protea, which is a little bit more rare, but just so beautiful. And if you can see, it has the, the velvety outside and then this gorgeous center to the flower. Um, it almost looks like Seymour from Little Shop of, of Horrors because it's so unusual. Um, most of the Protea actually come from Australia and they just kind of developed in their own way in that continent that was severed off from the rest of the world. So, so they're gorgeous flowers, but this guy is gonna be like the, the piece de resistance in this arrangement. So we're gonna cut this a little bit shorter, not too short, and we're gonna wiggle it in and work it into the armature that we have there right into that part of the design and you can see now your eye just can't help but go there and rest there it can follow out here can go out the other way but eventually your eyes gonna to want to come back and stay right at the King Protea which is the focal area and part of this design Thank you for joining us at Longwood Gardens for this special Teleflora educational experience. I want to thank the people at Longwood Gardens for allowing us to be here and making us feel so welcome on our visit. 
And a special thank you out to Teleflora for your investment in educational programs for your member florist. It's events like this that allow us all to be better at our craft and to move on in this new environment. Wow, Tim, thank you so much. That was incredible. Um, you're amazing. Thank you. Um, I know you've got a few comments to close us out, but and I know that you're going to give us a little teaser about what we're going to talk about on Thursday. Yeah, so Lonnie, thanks. That hour went so fast for me, I can't believe we're, we're at that point already. But um, thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We had over 700 people register for this program. So we are just so thrilled and so blown away that so many people joined us. But don't miss Thursday. We have some special areas of the Longwood facility that we were able to get into and just by ourselves be in there and film some things. And, and in particular, we have a whole section on orchids and what we can do with orchids and floral design. So, you know, if you enjoyed tonight's program, come Thursday, be here again, but tell some more people, you know, let them see the link on uh, YouTube channel tomorrow and get them to be involved in, and be registered for Thursday as well, too. So, Lottie, thank you again. And I want to thank our friends at Teleflora. You know, you have been such a huge support and and allowed us to to do what we need to do to make this program great so i'm thrilled to be a part and i couldn't be more grateful so thanks lottie and thanks to your whole team at teleflora thank you tim and don't forget everybody we will be sending out the link for uh, thursday's program to you via email so look out for your email see you thursday same time same place take care thanks bye, bye everybody thank you